from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in London, England for HP Enterprise, now called HPE. HPE Discover 2015. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube, our flagship program. Where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Jeff Vies, the VP of Marketing, Big Data Platforms at HPE Software. Welcome back to The Cube, good to see you. Good to see you again. Great to have you Good on, get the update. Obviously, you were kind of teasing out in our last Cube interview, uh, talking about the software focus, the split operating prior to the official date on November 1st. It That's has right. happened. Now, it's rocking, cloud front and center, clear message, infrastructure products are underneath the hood. You got some DevOps, <laughs> you got some HPC vertical focus, we just talked with Brent earlier. Big data's in the middle of all the action. Yeah, well, the you know, there's the four transformational areas, and you're right, the last time we talked just a few months ago, this was just a plan, yeah. and plans don't always work yeah. out. Uh, so it's pretty immense that a company fundamentally split, it's devils in the detail, but we're already feeling, feeling it uh, working well. And coming to an event like this, that's as immense as it is, yeah. where there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. You know, um, literally there's nowhere to hide here. Uh, it's about bringing it together and seeing that it resonates. You know, it's not just about splitting the company in half, that's the action. It's about being able to focus and tune the business so that we can be far more agile and far more focused. Yeah. And um, still a big company, you know, there are companies yeah, yeah. smaller, you know, we're still in the Fortune 1000, Fortune 500, but it feels like such a nimble company compared to uh, the, the Hewlett Packard classic version, if you will. You know, you predicted it when we talked uh, prior to the split, you were like, you, you predicted that it was going to be the sharp focus, and it is, everyone we talked to here has a laser focus on their business. And you can see the kind of the, I won't say they won't say M&A, but like organic growth and also they're focused. So you know, congratulations on predicting that and it feels good here. So um, anything new to add from the Vibe show here with the new marching orders and products? Obviously the transformation areas are there. Well, th that's the two levels. And that I think it's important for the audience to look and hold us accountable for delivering on these transformational areas. You know, I would be the first, not the first executive to point out these transformation areas are not necessarily new concepts. The one obviously that my business is most focused on, and that I would argue is at the center at, is empowering a data-driven organization. Now, I imagine you could go back 10 years, 20 years, even 30 years, do a Google search and find somebody use the term data-driven. Um, that's not a new yeah. concept, but what's new is about the kind of data we're talking about, the scale of it, the velocity of it, and who's using it. Yeah. And that's where we're talking about making sure the technology is actually accelerating it versus getting in the way. You know, we, we did a poll and we surveyed why people sometimes struggle with getting these data-centric deployments going. It's more than just an app. Yeah. You know, getting the app up and running can be complicated. It, it can be non-trivial. But then when you're producing the data, the big question is, does anybody care? Does anybody use it? And um, I think we talked about, uh, you know, back in the summer that the monthly report is dead. Nobody <laughs> yeah. cares. Yeah, real time is where it's at. It's, it's got to be near real time, and that's not the exception. And that's where the focus seems to be going, is data-driven means getting your data, but getting it in the hands where it can okay. affect the business in a way that's meaningful. So I got I got to ask you on this on the transformation. I want you to explain this for the folks watching. The there's four transformation areas: hybrid infrastructure, security, data-driven organization, and workplace productivity. I mean, different names, but generally those are categorically ones. Sir, the data-driven. We had a great talk about the tooling and making that the one transformation. But your products on HP software cuts across all that. We talked with Sue and security. Boom, business model opportunities for her is data. I talked with wireless uh, that guys Dom Orr, and he's like, hey. It's the data. It's in the data. It's, yep. like, it's not the price of the access points, it's what, they, what they're enabling. And obviously in workplace productivity, data-driven is also going to be embedded in applications. So talk about the difference in how HP software, obviously we talked about the, the conversion infrastructure, Synergy team, it's a software platform too. So what's your group do 
on the software side and explain outside of the transformation area the products that you guys are driving. Well, all the pieces come together and are all essential. So uh, it's a little silly to say one's more important than the other, although I have my bias. Yeah, but yeah. what I think the, the key thing is, is that data is really a living being. And it's not, you know, we're certainly still in the industry talking about big data, but I'm talking more often about making your data big. Uh, sometimes we have customers that do have pentabytes of data and they need to work through that and, and find yeah. that needle in the haystack. Uh, sometimes they'll take 50, 100, 200 terabytes, relatively, you almost can put that on a thumb drive today, um, and they take that across into, as hot data, and then they act on that. And it's not really the size of the data, it's often, is that data meaningful and can you use it? Now what we do is we have two franchises, and we've really repositioned them, and I'd love to share that. We have the Vertica franchise, and then the Idol Enterprise franchise. Vertica is about blazing speed with traditional SQL analytics, uh, database analytics, but we use what's called a columnar store that can be 10, 100, even 1,000 times faster than traditional databases. <coughs> now the key thing, and what we've introduced here at the show, is the Vertica Advanced Analytics family. And this is where we have a claim that right now I can't find another vendor that can compete with because we have core Vertica capabilities, which is about this high performance engine. But now we offer it in five different ways. We have a community edition, it's free. You can take it, you can run up to a limited amount of data, throw it into production and go, and kick the tires with it. And customers love doing it because they don't want to just study, they want to do. Mm -hmm. We have Vertica Enterprise, which is our flagship offering, that has the optimized file structure. That's what Facebook runs on, that's what Twitter runs on, that's what major banks run on. If you want the optimal uh, performance with all the functionality, we've added things like geospatial analytics so that you can actually bring in location and place into your analytics during your data analysis. Mm. You want Vertica Enterprise. But around that, we've added a couple other animals to the zoo. <laughs> Those include not one, but two flavors of cloud. Not a lot of people know this. We have Vertica On Demand. That is a pure SaaS offering. You pay either by the terabyte or the query. It is a SaaS model where it's subscription. You don't worry about the deployment. You load your data, and our guarantee is you can be up and running in one hour. But the second one we have is public announcement for support for Amazon Web Services. So you can buy a vertical license, you can go to Amazon Web Services, go to any of their data centers, and be able to deploy that license in a self-managed server. So you're not in a multi-tenant environment now, you're in that managed server. And then the final one, of course, is Vertica for SQL for a dupe, where um, you can here move, if you will, the analytics to the data instead of the data to the analytics. And if you have large dupe clusters, run it there. So those five different deployment consumption models means that uh, you can have it any way you want it. Now some people would say, well, a company that's big, they're going to pick X. Well, I see increasingly big pharmas, they might take the cloud for a rapid pilot prototype, test out a concept, and then deploy on site, or vice versa and it's being received really, really well. And none of our competitors, they may offer one or two of those flavors, but we're the Baskin Robbins of databases offering all these <laughs> uh, different and, flavors. And the, and the Vertica On Demand is a, a hosted offering by you guys? That's a SaaS offering that you provide, or is that? Yes, it, it was well, SaaS offering from us. We have partnerships on where we deploy it. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it runs on Amazon Web Services today, and uh, in the future with our budding relationship with Azure and Microsoft that you announced about, um, I expect you can look for in the future where we'll offer that deployment option as well. So, okay, so there's, there's a SaaS that runs on Amazon, then as well you can configure it in the marketplace on your own as well. Right, with I the Amazon machine right. image. The distinction yeah. is, first one, you pay like you pay for electricity. Yeah, buy the drink. Uh, the yeah. second one, you actually buy the license. And I have a great example for you. We had a company that had a traditional deployment. They bought a license, they deployed, they were happy, they made a change in their business model and said, we want to move our data center to the cloud. And that could have been incredibly disruptive. With this AMI model, the license they had 
They simply took that license straight to the public cloud. Mm -hmm. They have to pass one penny, we provided the bits to be able to deploy it, and all their queries ran because all of these run on core um, Vertica. So it allowed a seamless movement that admittedly they weren't planning for. And you know what? Uh, you get extra credit today for that. I think it's going to be table stakes in the future uh, to be able to have a multi-mode way to be able to run that. And so and seamless migration to where you want to run the workload, basically is what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the ability to start and stop and expand where you go. And um, that is really what I think the next generation of analysts is about. So our group, the Big Data Platform Group, is with Vertica as one offering I described, and then Idle Enterprise, and we have some ex exciting news around that. Uh, that's focused on unstructured. That is text, that is audio, that is video, that is text in video, that is audio and video. So you really mix it up here, and that is the ability to extract true insight from unstructured information. Now, many competitors can do some primary things. They can do keyword searches, but the trick with unstructured information is to look at the payload. You, you got to open the hood. You have to look at not the name of your PowerPoint file, but what's actually discussed within it. And that is what the idle technology is flawless to do. If you look at Gardner, Forrester Reports, we're the leader in enterprise search. And that's part of the announcement we did today. We've taken that franchise, in addition to idle enterprise, that runs on premise to Haven On Demand. And today we've announced for purchase on the CPL, Haven On Demand API library and Haven On Demand search as a service. The APIs are 70 APIs, more than a few competitors that are going around talking about certain things that begin with W. Um, we have about 3X the number of APIs that they have that go from simple to sophisticated. It could be format conversion up to face detection. Very easy to use, and uh, if the audience goes to havenondemand.com, they can check it out. They can go run their data against it, their samples there, and you'll see exactly the code sample that comes back. And so, the important point there is this is analytics for the developer. This is to do an analytic app. You know, a lot of people hear analytics, and there is certainly a, a, a school of analytics that it's the data scientist running the analytic but increasingly it's going to be about developing services and applications that use the analytics in them. You know, companies like Uber that run a service, that's an analytic, you don't think, it's getting you a car, but analytics are what's doing that. That's the smartness that comes into yeah. it. And to be able to consume and bring that into mobile apps and enterprise apps. I mean, that's the idea economy. That's what you that, need. I mean, basically that's the meat on the bone for the idea economy. Well, it's, it's, it's about consuming data within that service. And so the APIs are one thing they were offering, and then the other is um, a uh, search as a service, which is a curated search offering uh, that lets, you know, people use Google and Bing all the time, and it's great results, right? The results on page one give me the sports score. I can see how Manchester United did. If I'm here, I can see not the 49ers, not doing so well, so we'll go with the Pats. Um, you can see how your favorite football team's doing. Um, but Google and public search capabilities fall on their face often when it's enterprise search. Because the payloads that you're looking at are not web public websites where you're running a popularity contest of did a million people before want to go there. Now you want to be able to look inside that PowerPoint file, inside that video, inside that email, and you want to look at what's being discussed. You need a different technology, different approach, and that's what search as a service does. Well, if you use Google now and you type in a, like a search query for like your air flight reservations, it's actually reading your email. And it puts it right at the top of the search result. Oh, your flights, whatever. We did that's kind of freaky, but uh, it's interesting. Well, this is the new tooling. It's, it's part of it, but that, that's very, very basic. Yeah. Um, the ability to uh, identify key terms and go, oh, that's an address, maybe we'll link yeah. to that. Yeah. So what you're seeing now that we're able to do is look far deeper at the patterns that are being discussed yeah. and make those pattern connections across it. Uh, so there is some overlap, but we're talking about a whole magnitude of intelligence that goes beyond picking out dates and phone numbers and addresses. So I want to connect the dots with something you said earlier. You said it's not just about the big data and the size of the data, it's about the velocity. It's also about, you said, who is using it. 
and historically the whole data business has been about insights for the few. Decision support, you know, analysts. Knowledge is power, right? And, and, and even the early day, right, but, but you know, 10 you know, analysts, right, with all the power. And even in the early days of the big data, it's still today, it's the data scientists. So when you talk about this search paradigm um, and you talk about putting hand, data in the hands of many, or I talk about putting in data in the hands of many, is that what you're talking about? I mean, how do you go from where we are today? Few people have all the power. Is it the search piece that helps? Is it the combination of technologies? How are you operationalizing analytics? Well, uh, as simple as it sounds, finding the data is kind of job number one. Because if you can't identify and find the data that's relevant, that you're looking for, it's kind of a game stopper. But remember, often, we're moving from reporting to ad hoc discovery. And what I mean by that is you start to go within your data and you let the data start to tell you the insight. And from that, you're going to ask a second and a third question. That's why we call it data discovery. It may sound basic, but most systems are not set up that way. They'll kick back some analytics, you'll look at them, you'll go, well now I have three more reasons why that anomaly occurred. But that's yeah. where it's sorry, no mas. There, there's no more we can yeah. give you. Yeah. The next generation of systems, the ones that we power, allow you to do that double and that triple click. And the key thing, and you brought this up, is it, it's not uh, going and creating a report that'll take another 30 days to run. Those days are over. That is your first line, line of business. It could be data scientists, but also it could be just your line managers that want to be able to look at that information. And that is the changing that's occurring now, is taking that data and the tools, and I'll repeat that, and the tools that can be consumed and used by the edge, by the business people that are making the decisions, yeah. so that you can actually close that cycle and do something about it. And that's the breakthrough we're, we're pushing, and that's, that's a sea change. Does that mean the data center and the data it has and its data lakes are, are not valid or useful? Not at all. On the contrary, you want those edge groups where maybe they've been practicing shadow IT to be able to leverage that. So it's actually bringing together, we're seeing businesses from it. Here's the other thing. Traditional data, you had to know the question. Yeah. You had to like, here's my five questions, please answer them for me. Um, and now it's about enabling discovery where you don't know what the next question is going to be, you just want to enable it to be asked. And that's a different mindset. And that's what we're seeing being demanded, is that organizations don't want to hear about six month deployments, six week deployments, and sometimes even shorter. They want to be able to have that data come in and, um, and really at the speed of business, have the people that can act on it, utilize it. And They'll find a way if uh, traditional data um, IT doesn't. And, but that's where we're seeing the interest and the growth in the business. Talk about the performance of the team now. HP Software, Haven, Haven Platform, Open Source, all, all the things you mentioned. How's the business going? What's the top things you're working on? Can you share some insight into activity in the business? Well, um, well of course we don't break out the financials and we just announced our earnings, but Meg did call out um, some of the very, very strong growth especially around the Vertica franchise. 50% yeah. license growth year yeah. on year, right? So, 50% growth year after year, I'll, I'll take, and that, if that is a barometer of the business, it gives you a sense that if you can have the right tools that really make a difference, um, they will be adopted. Now, the, the, the color I'm going to give around it is probably if I was talking to you two years ago, we talked a lot about data modernization, and that's still occurring. There's a lot of legacy. Yeah. It's rigid, it's expensive, and it needs to move to the new world, right? And we're going to be Christopher Columbus and help them make that journey. Yeah. But I'll tell you, what we're seeing, a lot of the energy really starting to come from are the new use cases. They can be in traditional companies or in like new what? companies, but these are companies that, or, or use cases rather, where they're trying to do fundamentally new things with their data. Not so much, I want to run that monthly report, and now I just want yeah. to run a cheaper, Business faster. Business model related stuff, right? You see, I use that, that seems to be a pattern we're seeing on theCUBE here, is that their apps, or there's some sort of driver for growth. Yeah, there's some operational efficiencies with data. I see data center, you know, getting the tooling, testing, understanding success, value. But a lot of the pattern is business value. 
Well, it's, there, it's incremental is not enough. Saving 20% yeah. on my cost, it's not bad, people will take it. But what they're looking for is how can I have something that's going to have a material impact to the business? Because the realization there is, it is this idea economy, and if I don't do it, my competitor is. And now it's not data after the fact. It's data driving the business. Yeah. And so it's really changing the order of how data is consumed and used and that's pushing the adoption that we're seeing. Jeff, one of the things we've noticed in the, in the big data space is, is that a large proportion of the dollars being spent are being spent on services because it's so damn complex. Talk about that dynamic, is that changing? Are we able to sort of package these capabilities, this tooling into software that can scale better and, and actually be deployed you know, more simply? Well, um, you know, the example I gave with Vertical on Demand where you can have a in the cloud, on demand, data warehouse with the capabilities of Vertica, and I can look you in the eye and say in one hour you can be up and running, that, that kind of shows you that those options are there. Now, um, what I'll connect to though is that other transformational area, which is it is a hybrid world. The stats we're seeing is that even with all the hype, we're talking 70, 80% and north of that, are still going to be running traditional yeah. data centers. And there's a couple reasons why. For some companies, it's about control of the data, security of it. But for others, it's simply legacy. It's that's where the data yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. And um, they don't have a clean sheet of paper. They have to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, now you you will have startups yeah, that start today fresh. will cloud start in the cloud, end in the cloud, and may never have a server sit on premise. That is certainly viable. But also, they're, they're the shining star because they use data in a way that's elegant and relevant because they have a clean start. They have the cloud native and then they go use the data, their data full, their data rich in their deployments. It's not some fenced out parked in the, in the data warehouse. That's where Vertica is a great tool, it's performance, but like the new models, data is the center of the action. Well, I think you're right, um, and at the same time, what we're seeing is a little bit of a maturization. Yeah. You'll hear yeah. customers that say, yeah, Hadoop is great, and we endorse it, and we're building around it. We've announced support for Spark, Kafka, and some of the new innovations yep. that roll out. But you're also seeing people say, I'm going to use it in this use case, yep. not in this one. I think you're seeing the same thing also on cloud, that it's a, it's a balancing. There are trade-offs between it, and uh, the company that I think is really going to win is one that offers you that choice without compromise, that doesn't have an agenda to drive just one flavor of computing. HPE, and formerly HP, has always kind of stood for that. Yeah. That choice. we're going to give you those kind of capabilities, and I'll tell you right now, that's the formula that's resonating with our customers. Custom customers usually don't like to be told they're stupid, and uh, their investments that they made, and made for good reason, they want to be able to preserve and take forward for very good reason. And that is where our conversation starts yeah. versus a kind of forklift and you, know, you have to do it this completely different way. And yeah. that, that is what I think is going to happen over the, the next, I'd say, five years, this focus around hybrid computing yeah. and how do I do that well versus a tension focus of I'm right cloud, I'm right premise, you know, it's, you're it's kind totally of both hybrid. right. It's a hybrid world, that's, that, that G's out of the bottle. Final question I got to ask, I asked this last time and, and uh, it was a long bumper sticker, so I got to ask you, the bumper sticker for this show, nice and tight, what's the bumper sticker for HPE this year? I, I would say focus and energy. Um, I have never seen a more positive, focused event. I've never seen an event where you truly see not just Hewlett Packard uh, offering a broad set of capabilities, but where it feels like the pieces, the machine is connected together. Yeah. If you walk around yeah. here, even how this uh, venue is organized, it's all organized by those four transformational areas. There is no hardware zone, there is no software zone. It's just about bringing solutions to address these things. And you know, I like to say when you look at the marketing and positioning and the go-to-market of a company, you should never be able to figure out their org chart. If you can, <laughs> you can figure out, oh, that's this division, you know, because all their products use this color. HP Discover used to be like that. It, you, you could 
it, literally it see the org chart on the def- floor. Exit. Not and here. now that we've moved past it, I can yeah. say, I don't think that's healthy. I think when you can look that's at a company a good point. and not be able to figure out the org chart because it looks yeah. like it's connected together, you got to do other things, I totally but I agree think it's a decent litmus test. Awesome. And right now it feels like a connected company versus uh, yeah. maybe a, a more disparate one. No, good, great point. And also the other thing I'd say is a lot of companies do cool, but they don't do relevant. And I see a lot of cool and relevant. You're not over-hyping the Docker card, they're over here. You're seeing DevOps, so the cool stuff's here, it's re- but it's relevant, you know what I'm saying? So having a cool and relevant is, and practical well, is and, a very good benchmark. And if I can throw in real, Okay, yeah. you walk around the show floor, the stuff is real. You can yeah. buy it, you can use it, uh, you customers can are deploying it yeah. already. Uh, we are talking in a, yeah, it's visionary, but it's grounded, yeah. and that's what HP does well, and uh, I think that's what people appreciate. Jeff, thanks for sharing the big data perspective and sharing the data and insights with us here on theCUBE, appreciate it. In, always insights here from Jeff because that's the outcome we're looking for here. And again, cool and relevant. Data's at the center of the value proposition. Um, very integrated show, congratulations. You, you called it uh, in, in advance. Uh, thanks for the, for the telegraph on that one. Uh, HP's got a good spring in this. Very focused, a lot of energy. This is theCUBE, trying to bring the energy day two. We have three days of wall-to-wall coverage. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more after this short break.